I'm Kyle with iFixit, and we're gonna talk about phone durability. I have here Zach from the channel Jerry Rig Everything. So you've got a whole bunch of phones here, and these are all phones, every single phone you did a video about kind of what your perception of the phone was. Mm -hmm. So what phones did you bring to show us? I brought a couple phones. So I've done over 30 durability tests on my channel, and only four of those phones have broken. Um, the phones I brought with me today are the Nexus 6P. I have two of those phones. I did talk about that in a second. We have the Mi 5 right here, and then we have the Nextbit Robin. So the reason I do my durability test is because these cell phones, it, they literally are the most abused pieces of technology on the planet. So I put it through two years of abuse in about three minutes, okay. and then post that video All to right. my channel. So what's the abuse? Um, we start off with a scratch test, because you know the glass on the front of the screen, we see how hard it is and see if it is resistant to scratches. So most phones have like a Gorilla Glass on it, like Gorilla right. Glass 3 or corner. 4. Yeah. Yeah, and so that um, normally falls on a level six on the most scale of hardness. Like that's mm -hmm. when it starts to scratch, a level six pick. And there's two phones, the Motorola Droid Turbo 2 and then the Galaxy S7 Active that actually have a plastic screen on the front. And this is important because a plastic screen scratches much easier right. than a glass screen. And same thing with like the bin test. Um, at the end of my durability video, I always see if the phone is flexible or if it'll catastrophically break. Um, and if you know that a phone is gonna do this, you can take steps to prevent it. If the phone is gonna break, it usually breaks along a battery line. So this is the Nexus 6P, and the weak point on the Nexus 6P was A, right by the power button, and B, right above the battery line. Is this something that, that you know, anybody would be able to break? Or like, how much force do you think you're applying? This one, yes, it could be broken by anybody. Same thing with like the Mi 5 or the Nextbit Robin. So when I, when I do my tests, I start the bend, and if it if it like stops bending at one point, like if the battery flexes against the frame, usually that'll keep it from going any farther. But this phone had no stopping point. It just kept going all the way through and just catastrophically failed. This device, when we did our teardown, we really had a hard time getting inside. A much harder time getting inside than you did, evidently. Yes. <laughs> and so we, in order to get in, like there's all kinds of adhesive we had to loosen. Um, it was really a, a time consuming process. And the Nexus 6P, made by Huawei, ended up getting a two out of 10 repair score. When I ask manufacturers, like, why are you designing these things in such a glued together fashion? They say, well, we have to in order to pass our very rigorous drop tests and, and really to get the durability that we're aiming for. We want to make it as thin and light as possible. Uh, and we have to sacrifice repairability in order to make a durable phone. So what happened here? You know, I think they tried to make this you know, a relatively durable phone, they have a, a, rel a pretty thick piece of metal right here in the center of it. The only problem is, is that on the edge of the metal, they joined it with plastic using these little dovetail joints. Okay. But they took the back panel of the phone, so this is an important piece and this is an important piece, but they screwed it directly into the plastic, which is a fragile piece. So the reason this one broke is because all of these little dovetail joints snapped and then it just, you know, kept going after that. So what they could have done is something like, like in the iPad where you have, you have these metal posts that are either, uh, and in this case, this, this post was actually soldered on, but they, then you've got these other screw holes where they, they machined it out. I wonder if that's a more expensive machining process. I think, I think there definitely is cost effectiveness going on because working with metal is way more expensive than working with plastic. And with this phone right here, so this one's called the Nextbit Robin. I've never seen this phone before. Yeah, the premise behind this is that it's a cloud-based phone, so okay. it has this little cloud image on the back, <laughs> that most of your information is stored on the cloud when you're not using it. But the thing with this phone is, and why this phone snapped, is that there's zero metal inside of this phone. So every screw hole is directly into the plastic. What are some things that you've learned that would enhance both durability and repairability? Durability and repairability, the, the battery has a lot to do with the durability of the phone as far as bending goes. Um, the more rigid the battery is, and also the, the compartment that holds the battery, the more rigid that is, like the square frame around it, the more likely the phone is to not bend and break. Well, interesting. Well, this is a look at uh, a whole bunch of phones that have failed. You can see teardowns of a lot of these on iFixit, and you can see the bend tests on Jerry Rig Everything. Yes. Uh, and we're going to continue to be taking some stuff apart, and I think that we've got a lot to learn from each other because you've been doing some more like extreme destructive analysis. We do our very careful engineering analysis, and I think combined we've got a lot to learn. Yes, we do. Stay tuned. <laughs>